What's up everyone? Welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about this blame game that's going on in our community and why I don't think it's productive in a sense. What I mean by this blame game is I've seen in our community, and this happens a lot in other communities, a lot of people basically in a sense think that they're calling out other people but really are laying blame for, you know, at those people for their own decisions, thinking that their decisions in, a, in some sense affects them. Uh, let me give you an example, and I don't want to post any comments here. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. Some of my audience members have said about this 30 FPS thing that they're disappointed, but they're still going to go ahead and play the game. I also, in the same right, see other people that say things to them like, it's because of people like you, gaming is never going to get better. Basically telling them that they're the problem with gaming as a whole because they choose to actually make a decision for themselves. I don't think it's productive. I think the entire conversation of, you know, Gotham Knights being 60 FPS or 30 FPS and all of that, yes, it's valid to criticize the creative direction. It's valid to say things about the whole situation that could have been done better. But blaming another gamer, you know, because of this thinking that that's going to, in a sense, solve problems doesn't really help you because. You know, a lot of other video games that people are even comparing or talking about with, you know, Gotham Knights, they also had their issues. Can you imagine if somebody had actually said to people who bought those games that they were the problem, how that could have probably had very little to zero um, uh, effect on the entirety of gaming? The example that I want to give here today is Arkham Knight. So for most of you, Arkham Knight and Arkham City and Arkham Origins are some of your favorite games. If you're watching this channel, you'd know that Batman Arkham Knight is one of my most played games. Let me show you my Steam library here. Uh, I got a 332 hours on this game on Steam. I don't know why I opened Resolve, but that's pretty much how many hours I have. And I play on PlayStation as well, too. And I'm playing on Xbox right now. 30 FPS. It's kind of ouch. Because here I play on 90 FPS. I mean, that's the maximum that you can get out of the game on the base settings, except maybe you do some alchemy. Uh, you can go ahead and get anything more. Let me close. That. I don't know why I clicked that and that opened up. And so when you think about it, this game on PC, for many who know or may not know, this game actually came out in shambles on PC. It was very poorly optimized. And I didn't even know about it. I was just enjoying it on the console at that time. And it was just fun. But on PC... My goodness, this game was unplayable. In fact, I went back to watch, um, you know, a bunch of videos surrounding, say, you know, uh, the, the launch and the release. And people were giving tutorials on how to actually make the game run at 60 FPS by going into some of the files and so on and so forth. Yo, it was a mess, people. I mean, it was crazy how much this game was in shambles at release for the PC version. In fact, somebody commented on one of my videos and said at that time they were on PC and they remember that uh, it was so bad that they had to pull the game from Steam. And if you kept your copy, if you didn't refund your copy, they were going to give you all the other Arkham games for free. If you actually did that, that's what somebody said, you know, that was their situation at the time. And I thought, my goodness, that must have been terrible for something like that to happen. So when I see people saying things like, you know, look at Arkham from back in the day, it seems like they fail to realize that Arkham Knight also had its own problems. But the community did not go back and forth bickering, you know, at one another and fighting one another because it doesn't really affect anything. If you decide that you don't want to play the game at 30 FPS at this point, keep that in mind and, you know, maybe go for another game like God of War. God of War Ragnarok is going to run at some really fun performances. There's no doubt about, well, I said, I shouldn't say there's no doubt about that, but I think the developers are going to do it because they've done it before and they're using the same framework. They're using a similar engine. They're probably going to keep their game in a position where their assets are going to load well. Their animations are already done properly. So I don't think it's going to really be a problem to be very honest, folks. I strongly believe that there is so much room you know, for everyone to be able to enjoy games that they like, regardless of the limitations and people not getting shamed, you know, that they're actually trying to, you know, do something of this nature. I just think that that's that that's infantile and that doesn't really help our community. I think it really does speak more to the fact that some people are just maybe upset and they think that them maybe showing other people or talking down other people is going to resolve anything. Now, if you think that gamers are the problem with gaming and somehow, you know, you have a plan to be able to fix gaming, there are many ways that you can actually contribute to the industry as a whole. 
you know, you don't have to wait for anybody to, you know, fix you the problems. You can actually jump in and fix the problems yourself. You can actually go by and make a video game. You don't have to wait for a publisher. You don't have to wait for anybody to, to work your game for you. You can get the job done by yourself. You can open the Steam developer page. You can actually create one for $100. Do you know that? Like, really, you can go to Steam and create a page as a developer and pay a hundred bucks and you and put your game, put your logo and all that stuff on there. Easy. You can announce your game. You can put it. You can have people, you know, wish list your game and all of that stuff. And you can start the process of making a game. It's not really that complicated rather than have to, you know, diss other people. I think it's not productive as a whole. And if we go back and look at, say, all of the history surrounding a lot of our favorite games, they never necessarily had to rely too much on their frame rate and their performance. This is not to say that 30 FPS or 60 FPS doesn't matter because somebody's going to go in the comment section and yell at me. For me, it does matter. I'm not really, I'm not, you know, it's hard for me these days to play on 30 FPS. I'm, I'm being very honest with you guys. You know, it's not the easiest thing for me to do, but at the end of the day, you know, I cannot fault somebody else for actually going 30 FPS, for saying that they want to play a game at a specific fidelity, that doesn't bother me. It doesn't hurt me. It doesn't affect what I want to do. I just want to, you know, go ahead and play a game that I feel like I like. I'm not really worried about what anybody else thinks. And I think that's the way as gamers, we should pretty much allow for mutual respect to flow in our communities. Because if we keep, you know, going ahead and fighting, it doesn't really help anybody. I think the developers probably, you know, will not have any respect you know, for the fact that we could be united in a sense. They just probably continue to see that some people are so divisive, they can't even move forward in one direction. They attack both the devs, they attack other gamers. So where, you know, are we going to be able to get a united front to be able to make our own opinions known to developers like this? I think it's this kind of infighting that really does, you know, I don't know. I think it, it doesn't help anyways in being productive and getting things moved to a specific place that we need to be. So this is just what my video is going to be about. I wanted to go ahead and just say, you know, respect other people that want to play the game. Um, you can maybe go and talk about the game and talk about the creative direction and all of that stuff. But the customers, you know, it's their choice. You know, if, the, if somebody wants to light their money on fire, <laughs> you can try to stop them. But it's their money to light on fire. So I think that principle still stands as a result. And so that's pretty much my spiel for this video. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys' time and audience. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, and hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one.